Welcome to the Hugh Jackson Show, brought to you by State Farm. Nathan's girl, alongside the head coach of the Cleveland Browns, Hugh Jackson. And coach, by the way, looking dapper in your suit here today. Well, thank you. I thought I had to step up my game a little bit. We appreciate that. Now, let's go back to last week in Indianapolis. Obviously, didn't go the way that you wanted mm -hmm. it to go. But what can you take out of that second half where this team really fought and rallied back? Well, I think you just said it. We really fought. We rallied hard. We showed our grit. I watched a defense in the first half that didn't play as well as they could, make some adjustments at halftime, and came out and stopped the Colts in the second half. Watch an offense that was sputtering a little bit in the first half, really find some rhythm in the second half, minus a few turnovers. That's a whole different game. So again, we haven't played a full game together yet as a football team. That's what we're chasing. We need to get that done to have an opportunity to win a game. Is part of that just being such a young team and guys being in positions they haven't been in before and learning how to do it week in and week out? You know, I think you know me. I don't like to make excuses for anything that we're dealing with. You know, we're a pro football team. Yes, we are young, but at the same time, you know, these young players are working extremely hard and trying to give us everything they have. All right, one player, Deshaun Kaiser, I think has really evolved from week one even to week three. You could see it. What did you take away from his performance against the Colts? I think he did some really good things. I mean, obviously there's a couple balls we wish we could have back, um, especially a couple in the scoring zone. But at the same time, I know where he is. I know what he's doing. He's working at it extremely hard. He's given us a chance to win games, and I think he, he's only going to get better. How hard is it for the passing game when you have so much turnover in the wide receiver room? Because a lot of one of the things Deshaun Kaiser talked about after the game was, you know, it's about timing and rhythm. Mm -hmm. We know how limited the reps are in a week. How hard is that for the passing game? It can be difficult, you know, but again, we're not going to make an excuse. Right. We're, we're pros and we got to make sure that that rhythm and timing's there. Uh, we got to continue to work at it each and every day. They got to understand his ball speed and how the ball comes out. He needs to understand exactly where they are and where they're going to be in their body language. And I do agree that does take time, but again, we have to make that happen because we're going to have to throw the football in the National Football League. I heard Kenny Burt's had a great week of practice. Is he a guy that's really kind of trying to answer the challenge going forward? No, he is. And I think Kenny's been like that for the last two weeks. You know, obviously he made a huge catch early in the game down the sideline, made a huge catch on a touchdown. What a terrific throw by Deshaun. Uh, we just need to see more of that consistently in games. When you watch that throw that he made to Kenny Britt and you watch a throw he made on a third down play to set the valve, is that one of the reasons why you say, I know this is my guy? Oh, there's no question. I mean, there's not a lot of people in the National Football League that can make that throw to Kenny Britt, moving to the left and throwing back to the right. That is a sensational throw. But at the same time, there's some things that we're going to continue to work through with him. Uh, he's definitely my guy. I'm not going to run from that. But we've got to continue to get him to that next level. And if we can, great things are going to happen for us. What's the big key for him to get to that next level? I think the key, the number one key for him would be uh, we have to eliminate the turnovers. Uh, we have to eliminate those disruptions that happen to our offensive football team and then just find a way to continue to start faster as a unit. And it's not just him. We all have to take ownership of that to get our offensive team where it needs to be. Well, there certainly were some nice deep balls against the Indianapolis Colts from Deshaun. We're going to go take a look at one of those to your guy, Kenny Britt, in a formation that you created, Mr. Jackson, <laughs> right now in our play breakdown. Thank you. The tackle comes over here, Sean Coleman, with two receivers. Here's Kaiser with a pump fake going long down the left sideline. That bounce caught. Kenny Britt's got it down the far left sideline. Inside the Colt 35-30, down to the 27-yard line. All right, Coach, let's take a look here at something that you are the creator of, one of these formations that, by the way, people love in Madden, and Browns fans certainly like it here. Let's pause it right here. What are you trying to do here with the formation? Well, we're trying to make sure that we spread the defense out and create holes and spaces in the defense so that we can tack them a couple of different ways. Okay, so is the read for the quarterback based on how they align with it? I imagine there's got to be a run option. Absolutely. Okay. So what is he looking at right so now? So we're looking at the shell of the coverage of the secondary, and obviously it looks like a two shell. As you can see up top, the safety's down a lot lower than the safety is back here. We have some inside slants going with some wides going down the sideline for potential big plays. And if those things aren't there, then we have the potential to run the ball. Okay, all right, so we'll run it through. And you see the motion here. So here's the slants and then the wings, and boom, the ball comes out to Kenny Britt down the sideline. For a big play. I remember this formation last year, I want to say, and you got Isaiah Crowell running down the middle of the field Absolutely. for a big play in one of those games. So you see it here for Deshaun. Is it a quick read for him to know where to go with the ball here? Yes. Again, it's a two high, single high situation for us. This is a two high. We'd love to throw the ball because we know their potential to pressure us is not much. So we'll have a chance to throw it. Rather, like I said, we throw the slants in there. Or we throw it down the boundary to the, to the receivers. And what do you think about the throw here? Quarterback standing in pretty tough here. 
That's a pretty good throw as he's getting a big man pushed into him there. <laughs> that is a great throw under duress. It certainly is, and a nice catch from Kenny Britt. Next time we'll kind of push him in and keep him in bounds <laughs> yeah, for the we touchdown. If we could keep him in for the touchdown, that would have been awesome. So is this something that you love to put on tape as well because now every team's going to have to prepare for it and you probably have an A, a B, a C, a D out of this same And an E, and an F, and a G. you got to have it because what happens is they have to practice against it. There's a lot of different things we do out of these different spread formations. We'll show it. We'll leave it alone. They'll practice it extremely hard. We'll come back to it a couple weeks and away we go. All right, we hope to see it again. More big plays just like this one. And we'll leave you with that. And we'll be back with more of the Hugh Jackson Show right after this. Next on the Hugh Jackson Show, Duke Johnson talks about his electrifying touchdown run against the Colts. The whole idea was to get higher than he can, securing the football and just making sure I get it across the pylon. Welcome back to the Hugh Jackson Show. Nathan's girl alongside the head coach of the Cleveland Browns, Hugh Jackson, and Coach Duke Johnson. Right now seems like the best playmaker on this team. Last week, over 10 yards a run, over 10 yards a catch. What's your favorite way to get him the ball? Any kind of way I can. You know, they always say Duke Johnson can make a play. Duke Johnson can make a play. And we certainly saw that on his touchdown run, and he talks about that with our Matt Wilhelm right now. Hey, it's Matt Wilhelm here with Browns running back Duke Johnson. Another unfortunate loss, but your great play, your involvement in this offense, what has it meant to you to, to come in every Wednesday morning and have the intrigue of Hugh Jackson on exactly how you're going to be used offensively? Uh, that's the biggest thing for me for the week, uh, is just knowing in uh, every way that I'm going to be used this week uh, and kind of just getting a, kind of a new playbook for myself and uh, going home and studying, making sure I know everything I'm supposed to do in and out. I'm uh, just looking forward to the game. And does it matter to you how you're used? Running back, out of the backfield, lineup at wide receiver, does it really matter? Not at all. I like to think of it as my play, uh, my game, uh, my one job on this team is to make plays. Uh, regardless of where it is on the field, regardless of when it is in the game, it's 29's job is to make a play. It's second and two, you guys are down in the red zone. Shotgun, you're offset to the left of Deshaun Kaiser, and then he tosses it to you, and then walk me through what happens next. It was kind of a kill, check, read, kind of for Deshaun to make. And Najoku batting against a defensive end, he's listed as an outside linebacker, right. but he's really a defensive end. Sean Coleman had a big block on the backside, too, to seal it off. Joe Thomas was downfield, yes. uh, blocking. He was blocking in, looking back kind of at the same time. Leslie was in the end zone, uh, blocking because uh, the receiver, Coach, Coach Saunders, you're blocking. He's on him. Yeah, you're blocking. You never go solid, uh, regardless of where the ball is. Just talk about your your hoist into the end zone when you got close. Uh, when I got close, wasn't sure exactly uh, was the de defender was gonna shoot low or was he? I had no idea what he was gonna do, and it was all about just finding a way to get to that pylon, whether it's uh, you jumping up or diving down at the pylon. But me knowing kind of a mindset of a defensive back. Uh, they're shooting for your legs. Uh, there's not too many times they're going to try to take you up high and try to keep you out of the end zone. Uh, they're going to shoot and hope they can just knock you out of bounds. So the, the whole idea was to get higher than he can, securing the football and just making sure I get it across the pylon. Something that seems to be a little bit different this year when it comes to Duke Johnson, your play, regardless of where you're aligned in the backfield, out as a wide receiver, is you are fighting tooth and nail for every single yard and will not go to the ground with just one tackler. What has changed? Is it your training? Is it a mentality? What is different about you uh, this it's, year? It's kind of mentality, uh, especially when given opportunity in open space. Uh, open field is something that I'm big on. Uh, just find a way to make the first guy miss. Uh, if you're in rhythm with making the first guy miss and making the second guy miss, uh, and getting whatever you can. Uh, it, it, for me, it's normally uh, my main thing is to make the first guy miss at all times. Uh, regardless, if I'm in open field and I have space, the first guy has to miss. Uh, I don't really take well of going down to the first guy. Well, Duke, let's keep the success going, and good luck against the Bengals in coming week. Appreciate it. You got it. Coach Duke was talking there about how his rookie quarterback actually made the check to that call for the toss that led to that touchdown. How encouraging is that for you? Very. I mean, it means, again, that Deshaun's done a great job in this study, 
you know, it was a two play call and uh, his responsibility is to get us into the right call at that time. And he was able to do it. And obviously Duke was able to make a sensational run. Yeah, how about that run by Duke plus some great down the field blocking, mm -hmm. Jordan Leslie, Joe yes. Thomas, J.C. Tretter. That was a good one. That's what it takes. That's what it takes in the National <laughs> Football League. Hopefully we're going to get more of that and we'll have more of the Hugh Jackson show for you next. Coming up on the Hugh Jackson Show, David Njoku breaks down his Chief Slam touchdown celebration. It was quiet, you know, um, being uh, away and scoring, you know. Yeah. Everyone sort of either was quiet or booing. And I, I love it, so I, I did my uh, Chief Slam. Welcome back to the Hugh Jackson Show. Nathan Zgurn, your head coach of the Cleveland Browns, Hugh Jackson, and coach David Njoku. Chief spike in two weeks in a row. Is he starting to become a real chess piece for you? No, he is. I, I am really impressed by what he's done over the last several weeks. Not just the touchdowns, just watching him compete in games. Um, he is really working at it. Needs to continue to get better. There's no question about that. But he's scoring the football. And when you have a guy that's as athletic as he is and can make the plays that he can, it gives you another weapon on your offensive football team. And we've seen him on that out and up, and now we saw him as a red zone force as well. And we'll hear from him now in the Universal Windows Player Spotlight. Dustin Fox here with Browns tight end David Njoku. David, another game in the books, man. How you feel? I feel all right. Um, you know, we just got to turn this around a little bit, you know. So we just, just got to get back into the, uh, into, into the field and just keep working, you know. Back-to-back -back weeks for you, though, uh, finding the end zone, that's got to feel pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's exciting, you know. Uh, now we just got to put everything together and just, uh, just keep working hard. You know, two weeks ago against Baltimore, you have your first touchdown catch. What was that moment like? It was quiet, you know, um, being uh, away and scoring, you know. Yeah. Everyone started being either was quiet or booing, and I, I love it. So I, I did my uh, chief spike or slam, and you know, just went on to the next play. So everyone's talking about the, the chief slam or the chief spike. Tell us how this sort of evolved into this uh, touchdown celebration. Well, uh, I, I was doing it during camp, uh -huh. you know, just to mess around with, and I just figured I just transfer it to. To, to the game, and I did it the first time in Baltimore. What do your teammates think about it? They, they think it's funny. They, yeah. they, they like it, but they think it's funny. You know, it's, it's yeah. interesting. It's, it's, it's not really something that people do often, so. What do you think is the toughest thing about being a rookie in the NFL? Probably taking care of your body because of, of all the training you're doing, and then learning the playbook. You gotta, you gotta learn a, a, a playbook in about two months' time, and you just gotta just stay focused, just take it one day at a time, and just when it comes to working and you know studying sure. the playbook, and you'll, you'll be all right. And what's the best thing about being in the NFL? Being in the NFL, you know, we dreamed about this moment since we were a little kid. Uh, it's just, it's like I said, it's a huge blessing to be here. Uh, this is like a dream come true. It really is. You feel like now things are starting to slow down for you and you feel oh, like yeah, that, yeah, for sure. Um, definitely starting to slow down a little bit. Um, just like having more fun on the field rather than, than thinking too much about it. So yeah, it's a deal. I'm, I'm having fun. Uh, back at home this week, you haven't scored a touchdown at First Energy Stadium. You scored both your touchdowns on the road. When you get that first touchdown, maybe you'd do it in the end zone with the dog pound. Yeah, yeah. That'd be yeah, cool, that, huh? That's made a lot, a lot more. Um, exciting when, when you do it at home you know it's always good to see your fans uh you know cheer cheer you on when, when, when you do something good so it's, it's, it's gonna be fun it's gonna be really fun uh what's it gonna take to get a win against the the Bengals this week hard work uh everyone focused everyone on the same page we gotta stop with the penalties and the uh the errors but you know i i think we're, we're gonna be fine we're gonna be just fine mm -hmm. david thanks for the time man no problem good luck appreciate it thanks man Coach, obviously the Chief wants to score at home. We all want to see that, but I want to ask you this. Where does he need to improve to get to that next level of the elite tight ends like a Tyler Eifert, whom you coach with the Bengals? Well, I think he's heading that way because he's scoring touchdowns in the scoring zone. But I think for him and for our football team, he needs to continue to work at blocking at the point of attack. Uh, we know that he can catch the ball down the field and make dynamic plays that way. But for him to be out there playing and play out in there with the rest of his teammates, he needs to continue to grow that way. Well, hopefully he has a big game this Sunday. It is the Battle of Ohio, and we will preview that next. And finally, on the Hugh Jackson Show, it's time for the Battle of Ohio game preview.
Welcome back to the Hugh Jackson Show. Time now for the Northeast Ohio BMW Center's game preview. And coach, it's the battle for Ohio. It's a team you know very well. The Bengals come into town. They're 0-3. They have to be feeling desperate. How do you approach this game against your former employer? Well, obviously it's going to be, you just said it, the battle of Ohio. Uh, two teams that are trying to get that zero off one side of the ledger. Uh, I think it's going to be a real competitive football game. Uh, we're here at home in front of our fans, uh, the dog pound. We're excited about that. We're excited about going back out and having an opportunity to get this taste out of our mouth. So we're looking to play well. When you know a guy like Andy Dalton and you know a guy like A.J. Green, like only you can having coached them, how does that impact the way that you prepare for them? Well, obviously, those two guys are the heart and soul of their offensive football team. So we have to get them out of rhythm, and I think we all know that. We can't let A.J. Green come in and have the type of game he wants to have or have Andy throw him the ball at will. We have to slow that down. And if we can slow that down, I think we can slow their offense now. Is this a week where, because you know them so well, that maybe you have more conversations with Greg Williams maybe than in a normal week because, look, you know these guys inside and out. No, I, I have give, given them my, my two cents worth uh, about what I think and about what I know about their offensive football team. I think Greg does a great job over there, and I think he has played this offense before. So he has a pretty good feel for him too. But whatever insights I do know, I do try to share with our defensive team. When we talked earlier about the need to start faster, mm -hmm. I think it's something you can talk about. we got to start fast. How do you do it? You do it. I mean, at the end of the day, it comes down to execution. It comes down to making sure that guys are ready to go when it's time to go. You know, and I think our team is. I'm not saying that we're not, but I think if you look over those first three games, those first drives, there's been some disruptions there. There's been, whether it's penalties or turnover or something that's led to us not being able to stay on schedule. So we need to start on schedule, stay on schedule, and finish the schedule. And come out and execute that schedule Absolutely. with a touchdown <laughs> to start this one against the Bengals. Speaking of this Bengals team, they get Vontez perfect back. Mm -hmm. What does he mean to that defense? He's the heart and soul of that defense and the football team. You know, and I get it. Uh, he's a tremendous football player. Uh, I love competing against him because he, has, he brings out the best in everybody because uh, you got to be at your best when you compete against him. Now, he might not be the only person returning this weekend. Hopefully, Miles Garrett, who was able to practice earlier in this week, might be able to get back out there. What would it mean to have Miles back? It'd be, it, it'd be the same effect uh, for us because he's one of the most important pieces on our defense as well. Uh, he has not played in a national football game, regular season it's game unbelievable. Yet. So we're looking forward to having him back out there if we do have that opportunity. A lot of these turnovers have come in the opponent's territory where you guys are driving the football yes. down, you have the momentum, and it's either a tip here or uh, yes. somebody turns the wrong way there. Are you encouraged that you're able to move the ball that well? But how do you clean that up? Well, I'm very encouraged that we're able to move the ball. I mean, I think we're further along than even I thought we'd be, okay. you know, especially with a young quarterback. Uh, offensive line is starting to play together. Uh, I think what we need to do is just continue to execute, demand perfection, chase it, uh, and see where we land. Because I think if we keep doing that, we're going to land on something good. Because you can see pieces of our offense really starting to, to show themselves. We just haven't put it all together yet. And hopefully that will be this Sunday. What would it mean to get that first win oh in God. front of the home crowd? That's what we want. I mean, there's no other better feeling than to win in front of our fans, in front of the dog pound, and celebrate after the game. Well, we certainly hope that will be the case. Thanks for the time, Coach, and good luck this Sunday. Thank you. All right, and thank all of you for being with us on the Hugh Jackson Show. Remember, Browns Countdown, 11 a.m. on News 5. Getting you ready for the Browns and the Bengals. It's the Battle of Ohio.